Does pre-loved luxury really count as luxury? Let's chat. Hello, welcome or welcome back to Classes of the Quirk, where we talk about contemporary and luxury designer items and brands with a touch of silliness. This is a kind of con that you find interesting. Please do like this video and subscribe for more of it. Thank you. So this is a question that I've had on my mind for kind of a while, and I just wanted to discuss it with you and see sort of what you thought and sort of have an open discussion, open chat about the topic. And the question is whether or not pre-loved luxury actually counts as luxury. And I actually got this thought in my head because I saw it as a comment on Amber Ashley's video, one of her videos, and I don't remember which video it was, but uh, Amber Ashley is a creator I really, really enjoy. I'll link her channel down below. She's a lot bigger than me, so if you watch luxury stuff, you probably have already watched her channel, but I'll link her anyway. Uh, she, she unboxes a lot of stuff, and she does a mix of new from boutique and pre-loved. And I think that's really cool. I, I do the same. I buy a lot of uh, pre-loved stuff along with sometimes new from boutique items. And I do that because sometimes what I'm interested in is discontinued or it's hard to find or, I mean, it, both of those things, or it's also something that was very, very limited, like it was a limited edition. And so, I, you know, I can't buy it new, but other times it's because I can get a, a pretty good discount on something. And I think that's also a valid way to buy luxury. Now, she had gotten this comment by somebody that, I, I, I don't know who left the comment, it was just like, I saw it and I was like, hmm, where she was unboxing a pre-loved item. I think it might have been a pre-loved Chanel bag, actually. She has a beautiful Chanel collection, and I think that might have been it, one of her pre-loved Chanel bags. And somebody had commented, uh, stop buying pre-loved luxury, it's not luxury. Like, why are you calling it luxury? Something along those lines. And I really had to stop and think about that because I, I, I thought it was a little bit of a silly comment, but also I can see like where someone might be coming from. Now, I, I don't agree with the comment, first of all. I, I think that, I, I, I do think it is kind of a silly comment because a luxury item is still a luxury item whether or not you buy it new or pre-loved. But I think what they might've been talking about was like the experience of it and, and, and like the whole luxury, you know, the luxury experience that we talk about when you're buying something from boutique. So you're not getting necessarily, you might be getting the packaging because a lot of people do sell things full set, but if you're buying something pre-loved, you're buying it from maybe Fashion File or a, a private seller, uh, eBay even, you know, you, you, there's a lot of different places that you can get pre-loved luxury. And so you're not buying it new from boutique. You're not getting the boutique experience with the packaging. You might not be getting like champagne if they offer that to you. Sometimes they do. I did get champagne in Chanel a little bit ago. That was really fun. But you're not getting like the, the a, a association with a sales associate or a client advisor. So I guess that there are different things that come from buying new versus buying pre-loved, obviously. But I also think that that doesn't really affect the fact that the item itself is still a luxury piece. And I think that's kind of where my thoughts might differ from the person who, uh, who left the comments, because when you buy something at, at all, you are buying that item and wherever you get it, that item is still that thing. So if I buy a North Face jacket new from the store from North Face, I'm getting a high quality jacket from North Face. It's gonna keep me warm. But if I buy that same jacket off of eBay or, or Poshmark or I find it in a thrift store and it's still in great condition and it's still from North Face and it's got all the tags, you know, you know, the North Face little holographic tags and stuff on it, the jacket is still going to keep me warm. It's going to do the same job. And so it's, it's the same thing with luxury. When you're buying a, a, a luxury bag from the secondhand market, you know, that bag is still going to be a, a luxury item. It's still going to work as a bag, it's still gonna hold your things, and it's still going to have all the, the make and construction and quality that the bag would have had new from boutique. And in some cases, even it might have better quality construction. You know, there's a lot of talk these days about how luxury uh, construction quality in a lot of different brands has like kind of gone downhill a little bit. And I think that's true with everything, you know, um, manufactured obsolescence is a thing with cars, with appliances, it, quality always goes downhill. So I, I don't think it's like alone or solely the luxury uh, the luxury space where we're seeing decline in quality. But for instance, with, with Chanel, 
you know, we uh, had the transition in 2008-2009 from the gold alloy plated hardware to the hardware that is gold toned or antique gold hardware without the alloy plating. And so when you want to buy a bag from Chanel that has the, the gold hardware, the 24K alloy hardware, you have to buy pre-loved. You have to buy vintage because they don't make that item new. And so I have an, actually an example of that. So this is my brown vintage Chanel jumbo. This bag is from the 90s, so it's well over 20 years old, and it has this beautiful rich gold hardware to it. And a lot of people really like this rich gold hardware. And so when they want to buy a Chanel bag, they might want to get something with this hardware. And this bag, when I purchased it, it, it came pristine. Like it's in excellent condition. It's got solid structure. It's beautiful. I actually just made a video a, a bit ago about the fact that I was considering selling this bag because I wasn't really wearing it. And I have rescinded my thought decision. I'm, I'm keeping it at least for a while because I do love it so much. There's, there's no reason to part with it if I don't need to. So I'm not gonna. That was, you know, it was just, I was just uh, sharing some thoughts with you about why I might be interested in parting ways. But like, I'm not. It's, it's so gorgeous. But this bag came in beautiful condition, and it is a gorgeous example of Chanel quality and and the make and the materials. Like, it's, it's a beautiful example of that. So I don't see why buying this from not the boutique makes this less of a luxury item. It's still Chanel, it's still in great shape, it's still beautiful condition, and it's still the quality of older styles. So I, you know, I, I, don't, I don't see where the disconnect is about this not being luxury. But I, I really would like to hear your opinions on that. Like, do you think that buying pre-loved doesn't make it count? Like, does this no longer count as like the right kind of Chanel bag? I mean, you're not gonna know whether or not I buy it pre-loved unless I tell you, but would that affect your opinion of a bag if it was bought pre-loved? Now, I do know that especially nowadays with the rise of super fakes, a lot of people have been more worried about buying pre-loved. And I think that is valid. I think that is totally reasonable. I am the same way where there are a lot of super fakes on the market. And so it's hard sometimes to know whether or not you're getting something 100% genuine unless you're buying a new from boutique. And I, I totally understand that that fear of not wanting to buy something inauthentic by accident or getting scammed. So I think that, that that is perfectly reasonable. If you have it in your means to buy a brand new Chanel bag for the 10,000 plus dollars it costs nowadays, I think the medium classic flap is currently 10.8. But if that bag is worth it to you, you've always dreamed of having a medium classic flap, you have the ability to buy it and you want to get the boutique experience to buy it. Like there's nothing, there's nothing wrong with that. Like go forth, it's your money, buy the bag that you want. If that gets rid of your fear about getting a super fake, then that might be worth it to spend that extra money to know you're getting the real one. So I, I, I think that that is also fine and valid, but I don't think that wanting to know that for sure you're getting a real one from a boutique invalidates the fact that like this jumbo is also a beautiful example of a luxury bag. Does that make sense? I, I think so. It is also true that some people avoid pre-love because they're worried about getting like a smelly bag or one that's in poor condition, which I mean, that is dependent on each, each bag. Like you could get a bag that's in excellent, like brand new, condition. Like again, as I said, this bag was pristine when I purchased it and it still is and it's in great shape. And you can get bags that are really beat up. Some people actually like the aesthetic of a really beat up bag. So they'll buy a really beat up and often less expensive bag and just like have a beater bag that they paid $200, $300 for and they don't have to, they don't have to care. A lot of Louis Vuitton, older vintage Louis Vuitton, uh, I see like people will buy like beat up old vintage Louis Vuitton and just carry it as their beater bag. They didn't pay a lot of money for it. And so they, they can use it without like fear. They don't care about the darkening machetta. If it's got like worn corners, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter. So I think that there's different reasons that different people buy different things. Now I do want to say ultimately, I do think that it doesn't matter. <laughs> I don't think it matters how you get a luxury bag unless you're stealing it. Don't steal. <laughs> but like if you're buying a bag new versus pre-loved for whatever the reason is, or you're buying a bag pre-loved versus new for whatever the reason is, ultimately you just have a bag that you really like and are hopefully going to use and enjoy. And I think that's the purpose. Like 
one of the reasons that we buy luxury is because we really like the brand, the house, the heritage. We like how the bag looks. We like the construction. We like the quality in a lot of cases. People will buy a luxury item because they know it'll really last them for a really long time. Like my, my jumbo, this jumbo is over 20 years old and it looks this good for 20 plus years. Like that's great. This thing is gonna last a really long time. It might not outlive me completely, but it'll last a long time. Like this is a generational bag. And a lot of people do buy luxury for that reason. I see a lot of people talk about how they're gonna give their luxury bags to their, their descendants, their daughters, their granddaughters or something, passing them down as an inheritance. And I think that's, that's really cool actually that a bag can continue to last and continue to be. And I, I love the fact that these bags can have stories and histories like that. So that also is pre-loved, isn't it? Like if you're passing a bag down, a bag is inherited to you, you didn't, buy it new from boutique, you you got it as a, a gift essentially, that's still a pre-loved bag. Does that make it less luxury? Of course not. In fact, it makes the bag even more important and special because it's a family heirloom. And you know, I, I think just generally that it, that that's the, the point of luxury, a point of buying anything really, is that you are going to enjoy having it and however the way you enjoy it. If you enjoy something by using it every single day, that's fantastic. If you enjoy it by having it sit on your shelf and looking pretty, that's also fine. And I think that there's a lot of judgment that kind of like permeates some of the spaces of luxury sometimes, which I think is a little bit unfortunate. We all just like bags, guys, you know, that's 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 fine. We, you can just like a thing that you like. I did make a video uh, a while back about luxury and judgment and shame, which I'll, I'll link for you if you're interested in watching it. It's a little bit of an older video, so it's not as like polished necessarily, or not polished, but like my speaking might be better or worse than it, I don't remember. It, but I think that the, the, the sentiment is, is good. I think that there's value in the message that I say about like luxury and judgment and shame being kind of prevalent in, in the community and how unfortunate it is that people who like handbags the same amount as other people like handbags are judging those people because of how they buy or where they buy the handbags. And I think that there's always room to be kinder in the world. And just because someone is buying something in a method that you don't agree with, again, unless it's like theft, like don't, don't do that. But if someone's buying a bag pre-loved and it's their dream bag and they love it a lot, great, you know, like good, awesome. If someone's buying a bag new from boutique and it's very expensive because the prices have gone up and they love it a lot, that's still also great. Like that's fine. I think, you know? So I just wanted to uh, maybe kind of talk, I know a little, this, this little bit of a, like a babbly video maybe, but I want to just discuss this, this idea with you. Um, I'd love to hear your thoughts and opinions. Like, what do you think again of pre-love versus new? Or do you, do you shy away from new for whatever reason? Or do you shy away from pre-love for whatever reason? Uh, I just, I think it might be interesting to talk about. So I would love if you did a chat down below in the comments with me. And I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, please give it a like. It super duper helps the algorithm and subscribe for more content that helps the algorithm even more. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.